Hey everyone, it's Ben with Inside Look at Packaging and in today's video I'm going to walk you through my formula for the dimensioning of a master case or a shipping box. If this is your first time viewing this channel, welcome. On this channel, we bring you tips, tricks, and industry secrets around packaging, as well as help educate you to feel more comfortable and confident in your packaging decisions. If you've been around the channel for any length of time, you may have seen the video where I talk about my formula, how I dimension a master case or shipping box. Now, before we just talked about the equation, Today, I'm gonna to show you practically with some packages how I dimension the box. Now, if you haven't seen our original video talking about my formula and how I add a little bit of tolerance or headspace to my dimensioning, I will link it up above in the card section and you can go back and take a peek at that video. Otherwise, we're gonna move forward here with a practical application. Now, today I have uh, what is going to be an eight count of some cartons. Now these are just some sample SBS white cartons. Um, and the reason we're doing this today is a lot of times on this channel, due to my experience, we're talking about food items and food packaging. Now, obviously more industries will use cartons um, than just the food industry. And so that is the reason we are gonna be looking at cartons. Um, so it's a little bit more practical for more, uh, a little wider audience than just food industry. With that out of the way, let's jump right into my equation. All right, now let's jump into the equation. So my part of the equation is gonna be adding a tolerance and a headspace to our dimensions. So if you recall, if you've seen other videos, um, or know how dimensioning works and how it's listed, we're gonna look at length times width times depth. My part to the equation, what I like to add, is the tolerance of an eighth inch to the length and the width dimension, and then a quarter inch, and that is one fourth inch of headspace to the depth dimension. So you'll see on the screen here, um, if you need to pause it and write it down, go for it now. So the equation is length plus 0.125 inches times width plus 0.125 inches. And then you have depth times 0.25 inches. Again, that's gonna be a quarter inch. Now, let's look at these particular cartons with our tape measure here and find out using that formula what our box needs to be. Okay, so starting with one carton here, we're able to calculate out based on the one carton if we need to. Of course, it makes it a lot easier if you have the full count, which again, ours is gonna be an eight count, but if you have to or you only have one sample product, uh, you can size the master case. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna show you with using one and then we're gonna show using all eight. So I got my trusty little tape measure here and we're gonna take our length, width, and depth of the cart. So our length dimension is gonna be the longest on the opening and then our width is gonna be the shortest from the opening. So let's give it a measure quick. It looks like length is gonna be four inches our width is gonna be uh, like, we're gonna say about two and a half. And then our depth is gonna be from opening to opening. So I'm gonna give that, and it looks like it's about eight and a quarter. So now we have the dimensions of our one carton. Now let's visualize how we want to lay this carton out in our box, again, with our case count as well. So. For the purpose of this, I'm gonna visualize um, my carton. I'm gonna want it in our box facing this way, but I'm gonna want it to be two wide. So they're gonna be like this. So two rows, and then if I want an eight count, obviously I'm gonna add one, two, three more, and that will be four on the top, four on the bottom. So that's gonna be our eight count. Visualizing with our one, we remember two and a half 
is the width of our carton. So if we're going to calculate out what our eight count is gonna be, we look at two and a half times, we said it's gonna be four wide. So two and a half times four wide, that's gonna be our length of our master case. Now we're gonna look at our width, which remember, this is gonna be the shortest side. So obviously four wide is gonna be longer, that's gonna be our length of the opening. And then two wide is gonna be um, our shorter. So then we're gonna look at this, and remember this was four inches, and this was the length of the carton, but it was four inches. So now times two, obviously, it's gonna be about eight inches wide. Okay, so we had four times two and a half, now four inches times two, eight. All right, so that's gonna be our length and our width. Now, of course, the depth makes it a little bit easier as we're just gonna have one layer. So obviously, if, if these are gonna be stacked on each other, that's gonna be a different story. But since we're just having them one layer, we're gonna have just the length, which was eight and a quarter of the carton itself. So let's list that out here. Um, after we do a little bit of math, here are the dimensions that we're looking to use for a master case based on sizing one carton. So now that we got our calculation based on our one carton, we calculated out, multiplied it by four for the length of our box, two for our width of the box. Now if we pull all of them in, we're gonna see a little bit uh, a difference in those dimensions. And it's based on this. We didn't kind of count on the tolerance between each individual carton. And so, Obviously, our, our calculation that we just did only calls for this width times four, and it, it didn't count for the space, the bulge of the carton, anything like that. So, to modify it a little bit, what we need to do to get, basically we're looking for if we are having all eight cartons, and we're just calculating based off one, what we need to do is to each dimension of the carton, we're gonna add one eighth inch to basically count for the bulge and anything in between each carton. And so now we have our new equation based off of counting for the bulge and kind of the in between each carton. Now we have these numbers down below that you can see on the screen. Let's pull in all of our cartons now and kind of check our math here um, based off our one carton and let's see what we can do with all of our cartons. I just wanted to take a quick moment to thank all of you who are subscribed to this channel. I greatly appreciate all the continued support as well as I want to invite any of you who are not subscribed to consider subscribing. I know you've probably heard on a lot of different channels on YouTube of them asking you to subscribe and comment and like their videos, uh, but truly this is the best way uh, for a channel like this to grow, um, to be able to reach a wider audience. And so I would ask that you would consider subscribing. I don't anticipate you watching every one of our videos. Uh, I don't expect that. Uh, of course, I appreciate it, but I don't expect that, especially if you're subscribed. So please consider it, and let's get back to using my formula for dimensioning a master case. Okay, so we have all eight here, and we're gonna grab our tape measure. So the dimension we got was a, so remember our length of our box is gonna be what we calculated about 10 and a half inches. And what I'm getting here is just about 10 and a half inches. And of course, um, each carton is gonna be folded a little different, and so it's gonna be kind of a little different shape, but we're gonna go with 10 and a half um, in this situation for our length, so that's correct. Now, if we look at our height, or sorry, our width dimension of our master case, we're gonna see right about here. Let me see what we got should be from what we calculated about eight and a quarter and I am seeing that on my end too okay so we are right so we have about ten and a half and eight and a quarter based on our eight cartons here and so we just corrected that so again 
from this, we can see if you have all the product, easy, quick, just put a tape measure on it, get your dimensions for your width and your length. But if you only have one of the product, you can still calculate what you're looking for in the total case count based on what you have. Okay, now of course we have our um, depth dimension and this is a little bit easier either way if you're gonna have all the product uh, or just the one. And of course we're just going to measure and if you recall, eight and a quarter was what our carton was at uh, before and obviously we're still looking at about eight and a quarter now of the carton. So we have our base dimensions for what we're looking for in a master case. Now let's, let's list those out and then we will uh, try to find the master case. Okay, so now we were able to measure using all of these as well as with just one carton. Now we have those dimensions. That's where some people might stop based on the length, width, depth, but we're gonna plug this into my equation, which if you remember just a few minutes ago, we talked through and adding those extra tolerances, and this just helps getting the cartons in and out of the case, um, as well as it doesn't put too much pressure on them so that they're crushing. And then we're also gonna add our headspace. Um, so again, the up and down, as well as the flaps of our corrugated box, um, or our master case shipping box uh, aren't gonna smush the product um, and it gives it a little bit of fluctuation just based on the imperfections of the square box and all, and all of this stuff. Okay, so plug it into my equation, we're gonna add an eighth inch to our length dimension and an eighth inch to our width dimension. So if we recall, we have our length and our width and this is how they're gonna look at the top of the master case. Um, and so our dimensions, based on what we found before, are now gonna be 10.625, and that's gonna be our length, and then we're gonna have 8.375, and this, of course, is adding the eighth inch, and then, uh, of course, our head space is gonna be a quarter inch instead of an eighth inch, and so our head, our, or our depth dimension is gonna be 8.5, so eight and a half inches. Now, a note on this dimensioning is that this is gonna be our inside dimensions, our ID. Now, if you've seen other videos, um, we kind of talk about what suppliers and vendors look for when you're asking to uh, purchase a box or a new size. And oftentimes, they're gonna go off um, they're gonna, their specs are gonna be off of outside dimensions. Um, and so these numbers will change when you get a spec back. But this is what you need to know um, is the inside dimension because that's what you're actually putting your product into. Um, and so that's why we're getting that dimension. Now, in this particular case, we already have a master case. So let's drop these into that master case uh, because we are all finished with our dimensions uh, based off of my equation. Okay, so now we have our cartons in the master case that we just specced out and sized uh, and for dimensions. Now let's just quick review how these are fitting in. So we had a little bit of a tolerance in between each carton and obviously that's just for the bulge and whatever product is in each carton. And then we also had some from side to side and my equation adds an eighth inch to the width dimension and the length dimension. And this is to help uh, both for loading as well as unloading each carton from the box. So if this is gonna be hand packed, uh, say in your production facility, or it's done by a robot, um, this will work either way because we've added a tolerance that the cartons can go in and out of the case fairly easily. But there's not gonna be any rattle and they're not gonna move around in distribution. Now, of course, our headspace were also always important. And so when we close up our box, there should always be a little bit of space between the end of this flap. And then of course, when we close this, we don't want it to be bulging up because that's gonna hurt our pallet pattern. It could tip, all those kind of things. So we wanna make sure it's really flat. So that's why we add a little bit of headspace. So we're gonna add our minor flaps, major flaps, 
it's nice and solid flat. I can tell right here, uh, it looks good. So once we have tape on it, it'll be nice and flat. Um, and this is gonna be good to go. Again, there's, there's no product in here, but there's not any movement. We're, looks good to me, no shaking, anything like that. So our dimensions worked uh, and this is ready to go. Now, I hope you found value in the practical application of my formula. Now, remember when we're looking to size the master case or kind of come up with our dimensions, we're gonna add those little tolerances and headspace to make sure that the product goes in and out of the case easily, but yet is protected and it's not gonna move around and damage our product. Now, if you have any comments or questions about this application, please leave them down in the comment section below. I'll happily get back to you um, and answer any of those questions. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.